Hey there folks, I'm Mike with Articulate here and in this video, I'm gonna give you the quick rundown on sliders and Storyline 2 because once you understand conceptually what's happening uh, behind the scenes with them, they open up a whole world of interactive possibilities for your e-learning projects. Now adding a slider, very simple. I go to the Insert tab in Storyline 2, go to Controls and I choose the type of slider I'd like to add and by the way, you can always change it, not a problem. I simply click and drag and I have a slider on my screen. I can very quickly customize a slider, I can customize the track style, the thumb style. I can right from here change the size of that thumb, change the thickness of the track. So visually really customizable. In fact, I can also with this thumbnail, if I want, I can come and add a picture. I could add a picture as a thumbnail. So it would get rid of the circle here and add a picture. Uh, so maybe you've got a PNG file of a character that you want to move across the screen. Not a problem. Easy to do. Now, when you add a slider, to your project. I'm going to go to the design tab. You'll see here a number of slider properties. There are some standard properties when you first add a slider. For example, it's going to have a range of 0 to 10. Well, what does that mean? It means that there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 steps or stops on that slider. You can adjust that. Maybe you want 300 steps. Watch this, much smoother slide from left to right and right to left because now there are 300 stops in there. You'll also notice the initial value here changing. The initial or starting state is something I can also control. So maybe I want the starting state to be at 150. I can adjust it either down here on the slider itself or up here in the slider properties. Another very important concept to pay attention to is that when you add a slider to your project, a number variable is automatically going to be created and associated with your slider. So right now, up here in the upper left in the slider properties area, you'll see variable slider one. That is a number variable. You can also find this in the manage project variables area right here, slider one. Now you can rename this if you want. Actually, you can rename your slider down here as well, the name of the slider itself. And it's probably good practice to do so, especially if you have multiple sliders that you're going to be working with. So maybe I do that here. Maybe this is special slider, we call it here. So that's my special slider, just to be able to keep track of our sliders. So those are the basics. Now, what does that mean? Well, check this out. What can I do with this, you might ask yourself. Well, I'm going to insert a text box and I'm going to insert a reference to that number variable. And let's make that large so you can see it. There we go, we'll set it, we will set it right here. And watch this. What's happening since that number variable is associated with the slider. As I move the slider, which is in the zero spot, Watch this as I go up to 300. Pay attention to this number variable reference. That number variable is automatically being adjusted. That in and of itself right there is a great thing to keep in mind because now I can adjust this number on the screen simply by using the slider. So when we start to think of infographics, when we want things to be changing on the screen, there's a simple way to do it. I simply use a reference to show the number that that slider is at. Pretty slick, right? Now, seeing as how we can adjust the number variable, keep in mind that it is a two-way street. I can insert a shape, so maybe I'm going to insert a button. And let's add a trigger that says, let's adjust that number variable. Adjust the variable slider one, which was automatically created when we added our slider. Let's do this, let's assign it a value of 10 when the user clicks the button. No, actually, let's do this. Let's make this 100 to make it more visible. So I'm going to adjust the number variable and watch what happens to the slider. It's a two-way street. So not only does the slider adjust the number variable, but I can also target that variable and cause a change in the slider as well. So cool concept to keep in mind here. Uh, maybe we do this. Maybe we do an increment. Let's add a value of 10 every time the user clicks the button. Let's watch the slider. Let's see what happens. 10, 20, 30, 40. Check that out. I'm clicking away and I'm adjusting the slider at the same time. So since this number variable is intricately and intimately associated and connected with the slider, we can really create some fun interactions when it comes to interactive infographics. 
All right, one other really big concept that I want to share with you here is the ability to attach or tie two sliders to one another. What I mean by that is this. I'm going to go ahead and add another slider to my screen here. Look at that. And let's give that one a different, maybe we could go here and give that a different color. Look at that. All right, pretty simple stuff. Now this one is going to also have a range. Let's make this a range of zero to 300, just like the one that we originally created here, zero to 300. Now you'll notice that there is another variable that's been created. Slider 2, the new number variable which is associated with this second slider now that we just created. Well, here's the really great part. I can tell both of these sliders to be attached not to separate variables, but the same variable. So this variable or this slider right here is going to change this variable slider 1. And remember that the number variable can also adjust the slider that is associated with it? Well, if this slider is controlling the number variable which is attached to this slider, that means that as I move one slider, the other is also going to move. Look at that. So a lot of the cool techniques that we're going to be discussing uh, at Learning Solutions in terms of building interactive infographics really revolve around this concept that I can control one slider with another. So putting this all together, if I can control a slider with another and I can use, for example, this thumbnail and add my own picture, well, that gives me the ability then to really start to manipulate. I can add shapes, I can add images here, and I can do a scrolling back and forth, and I can really have this entire slider hidden. Let me show you. Let's say that I come here and let me format the shape. Or I can also, by the way, come right up to the design tab or the format tab, the thumb fill, say add a picture. And maybe I've got an oil can here I'm going to add. I'll say no border on that thumbnail, no outline. Make that nice and big. Look at that. So what I can do here is I can also say let's, in terms of the track fill, let's have no fill. Let's have no border, no outline. And let's uh, give a preview and check this out. Now it gives the appearance that I am simply controlling the movement of this oil can. And remember, I can take this oil can, this slider, and I can move it in any direction that I want to. So maybe we have some goofy design like this. Check this out. Let's preview. Now I can move something like that in that direction. So what this is all building up to then is using sliders in combination to create some really cool effects. For example, check this out. I'm going to use one slider to do a number of things here on the screen. You'll see some dates changing, you'll see some oil cans changing colors, but more importantly, what you see is you see this map of the United States filling with a color. Well, here's the secret. Behind this image here, that's this mask right here, I have another slider with a really big image attached to it, and all this is doing is moving up and down as I move the oil barrel. So you get a really cool effect simply by combining two sliders. So again, maybe that wasn't super quick, but I wanted to give you a quick overview of working with sliders here because there's really a lot that you can do when you understand the basic concepts behind them. And well, actually, let me do one last thing. Over here on the right, you'll see some triggers. We have the opportunity with the slider, since we have that number variable, to make things happen based upon what that slider is doing. So for example, right here, we're showing these oil barrels. Well, or we're showing this, these layers. Show a layer, make something happen, make a motion path begin. Make something occur when the slider moves, if that slider is equal to a certain number or it's higher or lower than a certain number. So suddenly, we can use the slider to trigger any number of things happening in our project. Uh, it's really, really sweet, and I'm so excited to be able to share with you um, as we start to build our infographics at Learning Solutions some of the ways that we can leverage sliders to create a really great interactive experience for our learners. So hope this helps, hope it gives you a little bit of background in terms of sliders, and I look forward to uh, building with you at the Bring Your Own Laptop session at Learning Solutions 2015.